Hi YouTube, I'm Gareth Beavis and I'm here with the Samsung Galaxy S4 taking you through the main features of this cutting edge smartphone. As you can see, it's a slim, powerful, plastic design. Uh, it's got one of the greatest screens that we've seen on a smartphone. It's super light and while the plastic back might not be to everyone's liking, it's a really nice smartphone in the hand. The Samsung Galaxy S4 has got a 1080p Full HD display which is in the same package as the Galaxy S3 which means the screen is larger but pushed further to the edges of the phone. It looks really nice and ideally it's just the phone that you want to watch videos on, you want to browse the internet and it's just so sharp you can't really understand until you get really close in so it's something you really want to take a look at and just enjoy. The interface on the Samsung Galaxy S4 is based on a new version of TouchWiz. Now Android 4.2 is a really great thing to see here because it brings a faster version of the operating system, it makes it quicker to use and gives you more options to play with when you're messing around with the phone. And as you can see there's lots and lots of widgets on the home screen that are automatically there for people to understand a little bit more about what the smartphone can do. You've got the option for more services there, uh, travel is understandably there, flipboard. So basically the whole interface is designed to get the smartphone user into the phone as quickly as possible. The apps are very well laid out and really it gives you a very instant portal into what is a very powerful smartphone. Internet browsing on the Samsung Galaxy S4 is one of the best experiences we've seen on a smartphone. That's not just because the screen is so full HD and clear, but also because the processor is upgraded, so everything flows by a little bit quicker. 4G is also on board from the outset, so even if you want to load a really in-depth, high-res page, it doesn't take very long to achieve, and you're there with the text as soon as you want it. Zooming in and out of the text is also very fluid. These are the things that people really look for on a smartphone. Also, you've got a whole bunch of options here that really allow you to get to the heart of what the smartphone is about. So whether it's adding bookmarks, going incognito, or having a desktop view for the actual full desktop view, everything's there very quickly, and we really can't fault the internet experience on the Galaxy S4. We really love the Samsung Galaxy S4 for its media capabilities, not just because of the full HD high-res screen, but also just the amount of things that you can actually do with it. The 64 gigabytes of memory is supplemented by a memory card as well. That means 128 gigabytes of onboard storage, which means you can never really fill it up with anything more than movies and music and YouTube clips. The capability is really there, and you haven't got to worry about the phone slowing down massively or, or things like that. So really, it is one of the ultimate media marvels because of the fact that it just looks so clear. Uh, there's a bunch of innovation on top that we're not sure really works. Things like smart pause, where you can look at the screen and it will pause when you look away. This doesn't work as well as we'd like it to in real life, but there's real technological advancements that show that Samsung is at least pushing forward with the Galaxy S4. The camera on the Samsung Galaxy S4 is a 13 megapixel effort, which brings a really high res, very powerful experience to the phone. As we can see here, the colors are very well reproduced thanks to the Full HD screen. It's got the Super AMOLED technology, which means that everything looks very clear, very sharp, and the colors are very well reproduced. Now, the only problem we've really got with the camera is that the user interface is a little bit confusing. As you can see, you've got a number of different icons and different things you can do with it. Even just pressing that, you know, you've got to spend a lot of time working out what each of these do. It is good the fact that Samsung's put so many different options in here to play around with, so you can really get the right exposure or the right ISO levels that you're looking for. But for the novice user, it's going to be a little bit confusing. It's when you've got things like the iPhone or the HTC One that's just point and shoot and you take the pictures that you want. Now, the good thing about this is that the 13 megapixel camera takes some really nice shots. You can get a really good, well-crafted shot if you're looking really hard for the right framing and that kind of thing. We do like things like the auto night mode it means that when things get a little bit dark you don't have to worry about making sure you've got the right setting it will find it for you and turn it on and while you do have to hold the phone a little bit longer you do get a better picture from it apart from that you do have these nice modes as well so if you're looking to get, maybe take a sports picture or erase people from the outside this is all very easy to do and it takes the interface from the galaxy camera which is really nice and does make it much easier for the user to use now the only problem we've got with it is that it just works a little bit slowly when you get into the gallery opening up pictures can take a little bit of time and some people will feel like they want to get it more quickly and see what they're actually taking a picture of. But beyond that, it's a very strong camera. We like it a lot and we're looking forward to testing it out really strongly. If any of you saw the Samsung Galaxy S4 launch in New York, you'll know that Samsung was telling a really big story about the innovation it's put into the software. 
Now this is through things like not touching the phone but being able to control it. So if we look at the smart screen, you've got things like Smart Stay, which is a feature of Samsung Galaxy S3, where if you look at the screen, it will stay turned on, look away, and it will turn off. We've added in things like Smart Pause, which where you look at the phone while you're watching a video, it will keep playing, look away, and the device will pause. It doesn't always work, simply because it can't always track your eyes, and when it does, it will take a second or two before it pauses the action, which means you've missed a little bit of your film, a little bit of your TV program, and that does get annoying after a while. Similarly, Smart Scroll. Again, it takes a while to detect your eyes, and when it does, the device works. So if you're looking at the screen when you're reading email or looking at the internet, the device will work. You can tilt your head up and down and it will scroll the screen. But in reality, your finger is right there and it's perfectly capable of just moving up and down when you need it to. And while we like the idea, it's not always that functional. The same can be said of air gestures. Now the idea behind this is that you don't have to touch the phone when you're scrolling through your pictures, making it much easier to get to the picture you want without messing up the screen with dirty hands or if ladies have done their nails according to Samsung, these are places where you'd want to do this. But it doesn't always work, and that's the problem with it, really. So it takes you a couple of goes to get working, and you're thinking, well, my finger is just here. I can, I can flip through these perfectly happily like this. Backwards and forwards doesn't always happen. And so you're down the pub, show off to your mates. You look foolish, and they say, well, why have you spent £600 on the latest smartphone when you know, the reason you bought it doesn't always work? So we like Samsung's ideas. We like the fact they're trying to innovate in this area, but it doesn't always work, and that's a problem for us. On top of the innovation Samsung has brought with motion gestures and eye tracking, there's a couple of new apps we want to show you right now. The first of these is WatchOn. This is designed to be a TV controlling app, and as you can see, there's an infrared blaster on top of the phone, which allows you to control all manner of things, from DVD players to air conditioners to the obvious TVs. Now, what this does is it asks you where you're based, it asks you what kind of service you've got, whether it's Sky or Freeview, and then it helps set up the controller based on that. So once you've opened the controller in your room, you can control a DVI, control TV, and it works as your normal remote control does. You know, it's a little bit cumbersome, it's a little bit difficult to use at times, but if you can't find the remote, it's a lot easier to do. Now, more importantly, it'll tell you what's on TV at the time, and it's got this very nice thumbnail visual image. So if you're thinking, right, I don't want to watch The Conqueror, you press that, press Watch Now, choose your channel and point it towards the TV. It will then tap out the code for you and turn on your TV as you wish. And that's really cool because it actually takes away the hassle of trying to work out what channel it's on and, and trying to find out which channel you should be looking at. And it really makes things a lot easier. Another app I want to show you is S Health. Now this is Samsung's attempt to get into the fitness market on smartphones. And while it's a good idea, it's very, very shallow as an app. So what you can do is you can put in the calories you burnt and what sort of calorie intake you're looking to have and, and how you want to live your day, if that makes any sense. And all it does there is it counts your steps, you can input the exercise you've done, and it tells you what food takes what calories. But you're looking for more. You know, we've got things like Nike Plus and Adidas My Coach that can track exactly how fast you're running, where you're running, and tell you your location. And this is very much just you've walked this far today and you could do with walking a bit further tomorrow. And we want more from that. We want to see a really in-depth and intuitive app that gives us all around our health. This is a good starting point, but there's more to come. One of the main ways to make money out of a smartphone is to have a hub that's got loads of media that users can purchase. And what Samsung's done here is have it so you can have all of your music, video, books, games, and learning in one place, which means that everything you could buy from a smartphone is available in one simple spot. Now, Samsung's done better here by making it a much more visual UI so you can see things much more easily. And giving everything its own silo is much, much better than being able to just look into the apps menu, finding the right hub, and then going into it that way. Everything's integrated here into one place. The prices are a little high, and the app limitations are quite high as well, simply because you haven't got that many things to choose from. But the idea is there, and we like the fact it's a lot slicker to look at. And also, the good thing is that it integrates things like your own video, so stuff you've watched recently, it sits right next to downloads you've got coming forward. So basically, it's a very integrated hub. It's an idea that works very nicely in terms of putting it all together in one simple place. And as you know, Apple does this very well with iTunes, and Samsung's saying, right, we can do the same thing, and it works really well. Now, once you've got that content on the phone, you want to share it in some way. That's what a lot of people are doing nowadays. They're putting it on speakers, they're giving it to other friends. And the idea here from Samsung is an idea called group play. What Group Play does is allows you to create a, a group yourself based on Wi-Fi, and then once you've set up a password, people can connect to it. Uh, you can play music on five different smartphones at once. And the idea being that you can set up all, almost a virtual surround sound system simply because you've set up a group that everyone can connect to. Obviously, from there, you can also play games against each other. You can share documents. You can send pictures across very easily. 
And while right now we can't really test this because not a lot of people have got Galaxy S4s, it works very well in theory. And we like the idea that perhaps in the future you can connect a Galaxy S4 to a, a wireless surround sound system using group play and have it as the main focal point of all your entertainment. So while it's a very futuristic idea, we think it's got a lot of legs. Battery life on the Samsung Galaxy S4 is actually very good. You've got a 2600 milliamp hour battery in there and that actually keeps the device going for quite a long time. It lasts for at least more than a day, which is what you're looking for on a smartphone from today's modern standards. And while things like hydrate activities like watching video, browsing the internet, anything that fires the screen for a long time will cause you to have these really quick drops in battery power, generally it's got a very slow release curve which means that your battery power in the pocket won't go down too much. So as long as you're not playing with the phone all the time and have the brightness whacked right up, you're going to find a very pleasant battery experience from this. Compared to something like the HTC One where it doesn't have quite the stamina and you can see we're quite excited to see a smartphone that's actually going to cost you a lot of money and still last the whole day. You know, it's something we don't see enough of and it's good that Samsung stepped up and done it. On top of that, you've got so much connectivity in here, it's actually rather silly. Everything you can think about is here in one place. So you've got obviously the 4G, you've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, low power, which means that you can connect to sensors that will last weeks and it helps you to understand things like fitness technology and stuff like that. You've also got NFC, uh, you can choose to have a mobile hotspot on here. Uh, S-Beam allows you to send content between two different devices very, very quickly using Wi-Fi Direct, DLNA. Basically, everything you can think of in a smartphone is right here, and it says to Apple and HTC, if your smartphones are better in certain ways, we're going to allow the users to do whatever they want with our smartphones, and they can do it in a very quick and simple way. So, the main question is, do we like the Samsung Galaxy S4? The answer is an emphatic yes. The body being made out of plastic might not have the premium feel of the HTC One or the iPhone 5, but it's a big step forward compared to the Samsung Galaxy S3, which might have had a similar plastic body but felt a lot cheaper in the hand. This feels a lot more solid, and combined with the Full HD screen, it really is a stunning device. That 5-inch screen is actually probably the biggest thing we like about it. You know, anything from browsing the internet to flicking through videos, everything you do is just glorious in terms of the colour reproduction, the speed at which you can do it, and just basically, watching things on this phone is a really, really nice experience, and to a lot of people, that's the reason they get the phone. On top of that, the media experience is just superb. You've got up to 128 gigabytes of storage, which is fantastic for a smartphone, especially one that's this thin. And it really gives you just the choice to do what you want with your smartphone. The camera also is very strong. The 30 megapixel effort might not have the kind of top-end features that the HTC One has in terms of ultra-pixel low light, and the UI might be a little bit confusing, but really, just getting those one-off good pictures, this is the phone that we're really impressed by. The camera captures a lot of detail, it gets us a lot of color, and really, it's just a good device to play with and mess around with and work out and get in the best shot and capturing it in the best light that you can. The questions we've got are over innovation. So things like smart scroll, smart stay, motion gestures, they don't really work in the way that we'd expect them to. Sure, you can flick through the phone like this and, and have your pictures jump across, but your finger's right there and does it just as well. And there's no need to reinvent the wheel just for the sake of it. Similarly, with smart scroll, again, it does help when you want to sort of tilt up and down and make the screen go, but do we really need that? I don't think we do because we've got a finger right here that can do all of that quite happily. Innovation for innovation's sake is not worth it. But beyond all that, this is a really, really stunning smartphone. Is it the best out there? We're not sure about that because of the innovation features, because of the design. Perhaps there is better out there for a lot of people. But if you like Samsung and you like being able to have a phone that you can really rely on, this is the phone to get simply because the impressive battery life, the good camera, the lovely screen all come together to make a really good smartphone. And it's definitely up there at the sharp end. <laughs>